Okay, so I'm just gonna do a full scene breakdown of this one right here, this cyberpunk sci-fi one that I did a while ago. So I'll show you where I got the idea from, the steps I took to put it together, lighting, the composition, why I chose this camera angle, um, yeah, all this stuff. So, okay, let's, yeah, let's just get into this. So, first of all, I follow some photographers on Instagram, and this is probably where, I, I don't think I was looking at one photo specifically, but this is probably where I got this general idea from, is just following these guys, and uh, Timu is one of the guys that I follow. This other guy, Lucan Coots, um, I, I love both their stuff. They do a lot of nighttime street photography in the rain with like tons of neon signs like you can see here. So these aren't renders, these are just photographs. But that's kind of the feeling that I wanted to have in this render is as if you were walking down an alleyway and you just stumbled across this really bright neon alleyway thing and you just stopped and snapped a picture. So the first thing you'll that I, I want to mention is that like if you look at the camera angle here, I tried to just pick an angle to capture it from that sort of matches what you would see in a real photograph if you were walking down an alleyway and you just decided to stop and snap a picture of something cool like these guys have done here. So if I open up the, the blend file here, if I go to the camera, you can see it's pretty low to the ground, not super low, but it's low enough to where either if somebody was standing or maybe crouching down and they kind of took a picture um, on the, like standing on the side here looking up at this stuff, that's what gives it that feeling is just having a camera angle that sort of matches what a real person with a real camera would uh, use. Okay, so let's talk about how I put all these pieces together to create this. Okay, so I've just hidden all this stuff. So this is this is what I started with. Um, it was camera, a ground plane, and some random lights over here. This is just a, nothing special, just a square with a purple emission texture on it. Um, so the first thing you'll notice is there's some lights and a reflective floor. So it's worth talking about the floor here because if you look at the actual screen space that it takes up in the final picture, um, if you just look at how much space the floor takes up here, it's actually like almost a third of the entire picture is just that, just the floor, you know? So it's worth spending some time on that. Um, so I'll show you just what, what this is. It's just a plane, just four vertices. Um, and this is the texture. It looks a little bit complicated, but most of the stuff is useless. So I'll just kind of break this down into what actually matters. So this here, all the stuff that I just selected is just a regular concrete texture. It's just from like Quixel Megascans, I think. Um, but you can use any free concrete texture from CT zero textures or ambient CG, whatever it's called. Um, textures.com doesn't matter, just concrete texture. And that's the only thing I've done to it that actually matters is um, this color ramp right here. What this is, so it's, this is the roughness map that came with the texture. It's running into the roughness, but in between where it goes into the roughness, I put this color ramp in. So what we're doing is this is what the roughness map looks like by default. And if, if I zoom in here, you can see, it might be hard to tell, but there's a lot of there's a lot of subtle variation in this map. So what we're doing with this color ramp is just bringing out all that detail in the map. Um, all I did here was just take the black handle and just pull it way up. You can see what that's doing. So we're just telling it that some parts of this map are gonna be very, very low roughness and some parts are gonna be the same roughness as before. And so that just gives it a lot of variation while bringing down the overall roughness. Um, so you can see that's, as I bring this up, you can see it's just adding in uh, more and more patches of low roughness values. So that's what's making it look kind of like that wet concrete kind of look. Let me bring in the volume because this is uh, what gives it this glow here. So what this is, I've just added the cube. If I just set this to display as textured, it's just a regular cube and I put this volume scatter node onto it. So what this is doing, it's just adding this fog uh, kind of just haze over everything. So I love doing this because it just gives a really nice atmosphere to everything. It just adds so much more depth. Um, even in scenes that don't really need like fog, it's nice to add this because it, it, it doesn't always necessarily look super real, but it always looks cool. So that's, that's why I do it. So what it is, you add a cube, you scale it up over the whole scene, and then just put a volume scatter node as uh, that's, the, there's only one material on this. It's just this. Um, so volume scatter, density, 
Um, it's going to be different for every scene. A good starting point is 0 0.01, uh, but I brought it up a little bit more here. And then this anisotropy, however you say that is, I brought this up. You can see when I bring it up really high, it's just going to make the glow kind of closer to the lights. And if you bring it down to its default value, it's going to be a bit more spread out. So I think I had it at like 0.6 or something. Now this is kind of annoying working with this cube. So if you just go to this tab, the object properties, scroll down to viewport display, and then just choose this display as, click that, and then choose bounds. And then it'll just be out of the way. Okay, nice. Okay, so the next thing I did after um, just setting up a few lights and then the floor texture is I kind of wanted to block out the scene. So sometimes what I'll do is block it out by just adding cubes and moving things around and just having simple objects as placeholders for where the actual detail is going to go. But what I did in this one was instead of blocking it out with cubes, I just blocked it out with pre-made buildings or buildings that I made a long time ago. Here's kind of what those are. So you can see there is just a few different buildings that I just duplicated a few times. So this is one that I made a long time ago. I just made one floor using an array modifier to add 100 floors stacked on top of each other and then just kind of kit bashed in from some random sci-fi pack, all these like all this sci-fi junk around here. And then I saved that to my asset library a long time ago. And I've reused the same building in a bunch of different renders since then. Saving buildings you made or sa saving objects you make or buying kit bash packs and having it organized in your asset library, it just makes this so much faster because you can just drag and drop it in, build out a scene really fast and get an idea of where things are gonna go uh, without spending a ton of time modeling or um, organizing things. So in here, there's a few uh, cyberpunk kit bash, like from kit bash 3D, like the cyberpunk kit, um, like some of those buildings. And there's a few buildings that I made and I just kind of blocked them out into roughly the shape of an alleyway. And so that was the starting point for this. The next thing I did, um, the next thing I always do is I like to get the camera angle and the lighting kind of uh, set up uh, not finalized, but set up enough to where I know roughly what it's going to look like. And I like doing that because it just sets the overall mood uh, for everything you do after that. Uh, if you know kind of where the lights are going to be coming from and the composition you're going to have. So let's look at this. This is just um, neon sign here, which I'll get to in a second. Yeah, there's an area light up here. This blue section up here, you can see if I just move that out of the way, that's all that's doing. It's just this kind of glow up here. Uh, not super important, but I just thought it looked cool, so I left it in there. Just a default area light. The strength is turned way up to 10,000, and then the color is just a bit blue. That's all it is. And having that volume here is really important. You can see if I take that off, how much of a difference that makes. Um, just that one volume cube that I showed you earlier, this thing, just lets the light uh, just pour through here really nicely. Okay, and then this um, is sort of the main light in here, this blue sign here. So what this is, it's just a free image from textures.com. Textures.com is a really great website, which they just give tons of free textures. A lot of them are just regular images, but they're kind of flattened out so that it's really easy to throw onto an image plane and use it as an actual texture. So let me show you the, the uh, shading setup here. So it's just, this is this texture here and it's just running into the emission color and it's also running into the alpha. So you can see it's the dark parts of this image are, um, I think it's this one right here. The dark parts of this image are gonna be transparent and the light parts of this image are gonna be completely opaque. And when you combine that with running the color into the emission, uh, that's when you get this hologram kind of look. So um, I think what I'm doing is I'm, I'm just desaturating it so it's completely black and white uh, like that, so you can see that's the actual color here, desaturating it, and then I'm multiplying in this blue color um, just to make it that really nice teal blue kind of color here. And then that's running into the emission color, and then the strength is turned up, and then it's also running into the alpha to give it that hologram kind of look. The other thing here is I'm using this uh, like image of just black and white lines. You can also use a wave texture if you just search uh, wave texture in here, put that in. It's going to be the same thing. You'll have to tweak some settings, but it's the same thing of just a bunch of horizontal lines that you can um, multiply into the whatever's going into the alpha. And that just gives it that uh, hologram kind of look. You can't really see it here in the final thing, but 
on these other textures. I did the same thing and you can see the kind of hologram look that it gives, uh, that just digital kind of look that it gives all these signs here. Um, and let me bring in these other neon signs so you can see all these neon signs here are using the exact same technique of just a textures.com free sign of like some advertisements. And you can see in one of these images, you get so many different signs. So what I'll do is I'll just add one object with that texture on it, duplicate it around, and then you can just um, grab any of these faces and just move the UV map around to get a new sign anytime you want. So there's tons of variation you can do just using even one texture, just one image running into the emission and the alpha, and then you're just choosing whatever colors you want. Um, so one thing to note when in these sci-fi kind of scenes, sometimes it gets really overwhelming when you have tons of different neon signs everywhere and everything's super bright and glowing and colorful and just, it can be too much really easily. So what I'd like to do to deal with that is I'll have one really bright light in the middle and then all the other neon signs, I'll just make them darker um, enough to where you can still see them, but they're not super distracting. They don't take your attention away from the main thing that I want you to look at, which is of course, this big glowing thing in the middle. Yeah, just be careful when you're adding so many bright lights in there that it doesn't um, end up just being too much and it just becomes hard to look at. You want to, like my goal here was that when you saw this image, your eye immediately goes to what I want you to see. So that's how I deal with that. It's just kind of darken everything that I don't really want you to pay too much attention to and then brighten the main thing that's really important, which is this sign in the middle. Next here, um, once I have, actually let's bring this in. So this Griebel kind of filler stuff is, this looks kind of complicated, but it's uh, actually very simple what I did. So all this junk here is just, um, first of all, what it is, is all this kind of sci-fi garbage up here, all this just, uh, yeah, like sci-fi stuff happening. It's just a, single model that I took from a factory kit bash. So I bought this um, factory, yeah, factory kit bash a long time ago, just a bunch of models like this of just complex pipes and uh, platforms and stuff. I took one of those, I just kind of spammed it around a bunch of times, I put a metal texture on it. And then um, I, I don't even think I used multiple different variations from this pack, I think I just used one model and just spammed it around, which is a bit lazy, but it it doesn't matter because you can't tell that it's the exact same model um, over and over again. Like, you know, if you, as long as you um, change the rotation, change the scale, this model is complex enough that I could just use it a bunch of times and change the positioning and you can't really tell that it's used over and over again. Um, so that's what that is. It's just, you know, press shift D and you get another one and then you put it wherever you want and you just fill up your scene until it looks cool. So that's a really, easy way to just fill out things with a bunch of detail without uh, taking too much time. Okay, so once I have things kind of blocked out like this and I know where generally what it's gonna look like, this is where I'll start adding in um, just a bunch of extra objects that seem like they belong here just to give it a bit more life. So if I turn this on, you can see what I did was I just kind of thought like, okay, what what stuff belongs here? What If you were walking down some cyberpunk alleyway, what would you find just laying around, you know? So there's garbage, vending machines, there's trash on the floor, there's this random shopping cart over here. Um, yeah, just like grungy stuff that you would find laying around in the street basically. And that works for any scene you're working in. Like in that in the ancient temple one I did, the first tutorial I did, uh, it was the same thing of like, once I got to a point where it was uh, like I could see mostly what the scene was gonna look like, I just asked, okay, what kind of stuff would I find laying around here if I was here? So. You know, in that one, it was like ancient pots and statues and um, you know, just stuff like that, like ancient temple kind of stuff that you would just expect to find there. And so this is where having um, an organized asset library becomes really helpful because if I go here, you can see I have a folder of just a bunch of stuff. Uh, this is the city streets pack from Kitbash 3D. Just a bunch of stuff that you would find laying around on the street, basically. So it's, it's really easy to fill up scenes like this with um, if you have an organized library of stuff um, that you can work with. So you can see there's just garbage bins, dumpsters, uh, like cr crates and just stuff that you'd find on the street. Um, 
So I just dragged and dropped a bunch of that stuff in there and that just fills it up with um, a lot more life than if you just leave it kind of empty. Same thing with the people. Um, all these people, I think there's not that many different models in here, but it's the same thing where is if you use a few models and then just rotate them around, change the scaling, change the positioning, hide them behind certain things. You can't really tell it's the same few models just used over and over again. Like um, sometimes I'll just add an umbrella on top of one and then it looks different enough that you can't really tell it's the same exact model. So um, yeah, just find a way to kind of hide the fact that you're using the same model over and over again if you're gonna use that, if you're gonna do that. Um, and as long as you can't tell, it, it doesn't matter. So hopefully that was useful. Hopefully um, you can see that you don't always need to model everything in your scene. Like I don't think I modeled anything in this scene. Um, so it's this one was just more about finding a cool composition and cool lighting um, and just organizing things that I already made or things that other people already made into a new way um, and just making something cool out of it. So the last thing I would have done is I brought this through Photoshop and did some processing in that. And if you haven't seen my Photoshop tutorial, I'll just link to that below. Yeah, so hopefully that was useful. Subscribe if you want. Um, follow me on Instagram if you want to keep up with new artwork that I'm posting. I post all the time. And yeah, peace.